We've been making coffee for a long time, and there's always been some common myths or ideas that people get hung up on. Yeah, there's, there's quite a few. I think maybe one of the first ones that we were talking about earlier was uh, these crema myths. Like, yeah. uh, you really look at a shot, and if there's this like beautiful crema with flecking in it, then you've pulled the perfect shot. But, yeah. you know, not necessarily. Yeah, the, the idea that you could diagnose an espresso just by looking at the crema is, uh, is a little bit uh, short-sighted. It misses some things. Crema is an essential part of, of good espresso, for sure, but what color that crema is and what its consistency is will depend a lot upon the coffee as much as anything. I mean, you can have a terrible coffee uh, roasted poorly and get beautiful, like aesthetically pleasing crema out of it. And you can have the, the most like lovely, uh, you know, special, complex, intricate uh, coffee around and it'll get just the, the palest, kind of saddest, ghostly espresso crema. Yeah, absolutely. I think one of the best examples of that is uh, Italian roasters include Robusta yeah. into their blends simply to add this really thick, dark crema on top of their shot yeah. so it looks beautiful. But if you ever just taste a single origin Robusta, most people would not tell you that tastes like a very good espresso. Yeah. So there's, there's also people who will talk about uh, <laughs> yeah, there's, there's also the idea that you can choose when to turn off a espresso shot or when to stop an espresso shot based off of crema. And that's another uh, major issue. It, the idea is that once it starts to blonde, that's when you need to stop it. But that is, it's somewhat insane because every single coffee is going to blonde at a different point and the crema of every single coffee is going to be a little bit different. Instead, by focusing on the recipe and the brew ratio, paying attention to your dose and paying attention to your yield and getting those things like exactly where you want them, that'll result in a much better espresso than just looking at the color of the crema. Yeah, blonding is a very subjective thing. When I think maybe something's turning blonde, maybe Charles doesn't think it's turning blonde. And only when we start being able to talk in a language that's common, like a brew ratio recipe, can we really start to share what we think tastes good and what we think is right. And that allows us to move forward yeah. because we can share things. That said, crema color will tell you some things, uh, especially with regards to consistency. If you have pulled the same shot 20 times and it looks a certain way every single time and the 21st time it's completely different, it's probably not any good. But it only, that knowledge is only important in the context of everything else that you know. Absolutely. The, I mean, the major thing that's going to differentiate uh, the color of the crema is the level of roast. Yeah. Uh, because if you, if you think about it, you're going to get a color of espresso that is based on how dark the beans are in the hopper. So, you know, for instance, somebody that's, that's roasting really, really dark, you get these, this really dark crema on top. Uh, but if you're, if you're brewing something that's a really light roasted coffee, it's going to come out looking blonde immediately. Yeah. But so that's also, the, major, the major thing. Also, it, it should be noted that crema tastes terrible. Like, it's one of the least uh, enjoyable parts of drinking coffee. And, you know, it's, more crema is not necessarily going to mean a tastier shot. Uh, there's also, uh, when people pull a shot of espresso and they let it sit out and the crema dissipates, there's a common idea that like once the, there's a hole in the crema that it doesn't taste any good, and, and that's just simply not true. Now there's things happening to that espresso shot as it sits, but it's not going to be the crema signifying a loss of flavor. What'll happen is the temperature will change, and as the temperature changes, maybe what flavors we pick up on will change. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of the classic ideas behind espresso, like super hot cup, uh, you know, everything just really hot. It has a lot to do with hiding the flavors of bad espresso. 